Hey, what's going on y'all? My name is Kyrie LaPlanche and I have the honor and privilege to be serving here as part of the media staff at Motivation Church. And we just wanna say thank you for joining us today. And before we get into this message, we want you to do a few things for us before we get into this. Like, comment, and subscribe. Why? Because we have so much amazing content on here that we're putting out and we want you to be a part of it. So look, I hope you have a notebook, I hope you have a pen, or I hope you have something to write notes down because we're about to dive into this message. So let's get it. Um, sometimes uh, you just gotta flow with it and let it be what it's gonna be. Um, and so the way that God has moved this morning into this afternoon, um, I think it's an indication of how he's moving in your life. Somebody is in their suddenly season, for real. Uh, only two people got that. Let me say it louder. Only two people caught it. This flow today was not the way we scheduled it. We had a nice program and an order, and you know, everything was good, and then God decided to kick in the door and wave his 4-4 and, and just, I mean, just ask somebody, what kind of church is this? And so sometimes you just got to go with God. And I think the same thing that God did in this place, he's doing in your life. God's getting ready to kick in some doors. He might surprise somebody at work tomorrow. Who am I talking to? He might bust down your classroom and show up and fill your teacher with the Holy Ghost and give you A's. Hit that bank manager and tell him approved. See, y'all don't got faith like I got faith. All right, maybe I'll find another church, Cliff, next week to preach to because they're not feeling what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so today, thank you, Sean. I'm going to let y'all take a break. Y'all ain't killing it. Can we give it up for our band, though? What's good? Turtle, I almost threw the mic at you. I was like, but it's expensive, and I need you back next week. But that was crazy. All right, anyway, um, last week we started, um, well, we continued at our series of Making Your Mark. Everybody say, Make Your Mark. And we started our series uh, this, well, in January. And last week was part four of our series, Make Your Mark. And we started last week talking about Mark Your Money. And we did part one of that called My Seed is on the Line. Somebody shout, My Seed is on the Line. Was that good to anybody? It, it was amazing because we had so many conversations over this past week because, you know, the moment we talk about money in church, I'm getting y'all prepped because I know we got some uh, new family and friends here today. When you talk about money in church, people get tight, people get tired, people need a bathroom break. People are like, oh, and they totally tune out because they're just waiting to talk about 10%. And um, the thing is, last week we, we shared from the experience of Abraham when God told him, I want you to sacrifice your son. And Abraham is obedient to God because he says, whatever you ask me for, I'm going to give it to you because everything I have comes from you anyway. And so he says, I'm going to bring my son, my only son, that he waited for 100 years. And he brings his son to the mountain, right? But when he's going there, what does he say to him? He says, uh, hey, y'all, stay here. I'm taking my son. We're going to worship, and we'll be back. And so we talked about that last week, how God called it a sacrifice, and Abraham called it worship. So there's something about worship that's a sacrifice. It's what you give to God, what you're willing to release to him. And so we did part one last week and prayerfully that blessed you prayerfully it helped you uh, in your understanding but I want to uh, take it to another level today and we're going to do part two of that um, mark your money everybody say mark your money and I want to focus today now this is a biblical yet historical fact that has not been disproven yet uh, that 90 percent of people who take notes when I preach go to heaven uh, you don't want to find out the hard way so go ahead and take some notes but I want to help you. We're going to preach part two of Mark Your Money. And I want to preach from the subject, this is how we do it. Tell somebody this is how we do it. I know it's in your head. Go ahead and sing it one time. Thank you. Okay, because I know y'all just fighting the urge. This is how we do it. All right, y'all. 
I, I felt it in the room. I felt it in the room. Um, so we're going to talk about this. I want to uh, share some stuff. And one of the things that we're going to uh, kind of talk about and break down, I want you to understand this, um, that money arguments are the second leading cause of divorce. The number one cause of divorce is infidelity, cheating. But the number two cause of divorce is money issues. Everybody say money issues. And a lot of times uh, people are coming into marriage, especially going into high debt, um, and there's not a lot of communication, so there's a lot of anxiety that happens when you're in relationship and broke. Can, it's hard to be in love and broke at the same time. How many married people know what I'm talking about? It's, it's it, it, you know, you might have a season of it, but you can't stay happily married and broke. You don't want to make love, you know, with the lights off, not by choice. <laughs> like, I need them to be on. I need, I need AC. I need heat. I need, you know... I love you, but I'm, my stomach, my ribs are touching. You know what I'm saying? Like, feed me first. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, so when you're broke, it's hard to be in love and be happily married um, when you're broke. And so two-thirds of marriages um, are struggling because they're in debt. And according to a recent survey, um, the CDFA professionals from across North America, uh, they talked about it. They said 22%. People are struggling in marriage um, because of finances. Um, it's interesting because the Bible says this in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. It says, money answers all things. And I want to help you with perspective because money ain't everything. It's not everything. But tell somebody it helps. <laughs> uh, I think the prophet uh, Yeezy said, Having money ain't everything, but not having it is. And I want you to see that not all of your life issues will be resolved with money, but most of them can be helped. So we got to understand um, that we have to learn how to respect money. Tell somebody, put respect on it. Um, and so I, I want to help you because I, I was sharing, and we have the development team who I'm getting ready to introduce to y'all. Um, that kind of helped me with this message today. They sent me some notes. They sent me a couple things. One of the, the quotes they sent me, I'm going to read it for you. It's really good. It says, money is a tool. It will take you wherever you wish, but it will not replace you as the driver. Mm. Let me say it again because some of y'all slow but worth waiting for. Money is a tool. It will take you wherever you wish, but it will not replace you as the driver. Tell somebody my money matters. So I want to help you because I want to get you to a place of understanding in your relationship with money. And a lot of people right now are uncomfortable because I'm standing flat-footed, chilling with my Air Force Ones on, talking about money in church. And I'm not intimidated by your attitude. I'm not intimidated by, you know, how you feel about money. I've, I've grown over that because when we first started this church, I knew we had so many people that were new to Christ, new to God, that didn't know anything about Jesus. And because of pop culture, pop culture has given us a perverted version of, of money in church. They've given us this attitude that, you know, this perspective that it's a negative thing. And all the church wants is your money. But they don't tell you all the mall wants is your money. That all these designers want is your money. And church has done more for you than these designers have. Okay, I'm sorry. Y'all didn't want to hear that today. <laughs> Uh, but I want to help you because the two things I told y'all, if y'all got little kids in here, take them to kids' church. I told you the two things that everybody wants and nobody wants to talk about in church is what? Sex and money. And those two areas of our lives will get us in the most trouble. And we'll never want to talk about it until we're in trouble. So I want to help break you out of that. I know we're kind of a youngish church. The average age of our church is between 23 years old and 36 years old is the average age of our church. So I understand what we're dealing with. And I know who I pastor. Some of y'all are grown, grown. And you're a little bit out of that phase, but you still grown with bad credit. I know y'all didn't know this, but Christians do have bad credit. There are Christians who love Jesus and don't pay any of their bills. 
And so we're getting ready to grow. Tell somebody I'm getting ready to grow. I told you you're going to like this. Um, uh, just tell somebody he's preaching to you. Go ahead and tell him he's, he's preaching to you. And I refuse, I refuse to be the pastor that stands by and just preaches Sunday school messages to make you shout and dance and make you excited about coming back next week and not challenge you to grow. And so I'm going to challenge you a little bit. And um, shameless plug, this coming Saturday, February 4th at 11 a.m., our development team is going to be teaching us about finances. Y'all ready for that? All right, not enough claps, so let me help you. Um, so Marquise, come on, stand up, Marquise. He's our CFO. Marquise is going to be teaching us, you can sit down, teaching us about debt management. How many of y'all got some debt you're trying to get rid of? You're trying to get over it. You're trying to let that debt go. Marquise is going to teach us about debt management and how to overcome that, how to deal with that. And we're going to learn not only how to, how to deal and manage our debt, but then we're going to learn how to stay out of debt. We're going to learn how to deal with saving our money and money, many, uh, money management. So Christina's going to be leading us. Come on, Christina, stand up for the people. She couldn't wait for this moment. Yep. No, keep standing for a second. I just want you to feel real uncomfortable. All right, go ahead and sit down. <laughs> But she's going to teach us, she's going to teach us about savings. She's going to teach us about uh, money, money management. One of the things that they sent me, they said, a budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. So we're going to help you budget. We're going to help you learn how to manage your money. See, a lot of times y'all so used to being in church hearing about the 10%, but nobody's teaching you how to manage the 90 and many of us, if we can be honest, if we ever learned how to manage the 90, giving the 10 would be easy. So we're going to help you grow. Uh, and the last thing, come on, Cliff. I know he's waiting all day for this. Come on, help Brooklyn stand up. Come on, let's make some noise for Cliff. All right. He's going to, that was quick, man. Come on, stand up again, man. Come on, man. You, you're from New York. You can't be shy. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, he's going to teach us about starting a business and investing. And so we talked about this, that an investment is knowledge that pays the best interest. So we're going to deal with this. So how many of y'all come in Saturday at 11 o'clock? How many? Let me see. Let me see hands. Let me see hands. I'm judging everybody whose hands aren't up, but I want to see who is coming. All right. We're going to deal with this. We're going to help you take your money to another level. Come on, somebody shout, this is how we do it. All right, give me a few minutes, and I promise it'll be good. Genesis chapter 14, and I'm going to jump around a little bit. I got a few verses I want to share with you. Um, rather than preach from one text, I'm going to share some thoughts. I'm going to share some principles from the Word of God, and I want to establish some things. Last week, we talked about sacrifice. We talked about giving as worship, but I want to take it to another level. And in Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 through 20 in the NLT, uh, actually, I'm going to just read 19 and 20. It says, Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abraham, or Abram, gave Melchizedek, he gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. All right, so I want you to see this, that tithing, this 10% thing, tithing is established as giving before the law comes. Before the law was ever given, tithing was established as something that he did and that they did. So I want you to understand that tithing is not limited to or bound by the law. Let's grow. I want you to open up. Melchizedek in the Old Testament, he was a Christ-like character. He was someone, remember, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. What that means is everything in the Old Testament is pointing towards what's getting ready to happen in the New Testament. Melchizedek being a priest, he was a high priest, he was someone that was a Jesus-like figure. He wasn't Jesus, but he was a Jesus-like figure who shows up on the scene and he blesses Abram. Before he becomes Abraham, he blesses him. And as a result of receiving a blessing, 
Abraham gives a tenth to this high priest by the name of Melchizedek. So I want you to understand something. I don't know how he came up with 10. It doesn't say that God told him to give 10. But at some point, it was established that he was going to give 10. And that principle of the 10th now is in motion. And I need you to see something. I need you to get this. And I need you to wrap this around your heart. That 10 is an indication of my faith. 10 is an indication of my faith. And my faithfulness. So when we're talking about this, I want you to hold on to that thought for a moment because I need you to see this. It's, it's crazy when we think about this. But the question I have for you is, how much is your health worth to you? How much is your family worth to you? Come on, put a dollar amount on it. Put a dollar amount on the condition of your life. Think about everything God's blessed you with. What's it worth? The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his only soul? It's going to get real good in a minute, I promise you. But I want you to see this because the truth is, many of us, we got these prayers, right? We pray. We say, God, cover my children. God, cover my family, cover my marriage, cover my home, cover my job, cover my ideas, cover my education. God, do this, do that. And we have all of these prayers. But statistically, only 30% of people who attend church tithe. 30%. So 70% of people statistically are only given between 5 and $10 per week. But we pray these big prayers. We have these major requests and I've learned something because it's crazy that sometimes it's the people who want the most give the least yeah tell somebody act your wage go ahead and tell them act, act your wage because there's a lot of people that put a demand on some stuff but what they give doesn't amount to what they ask for and so you got to be careful and check your heart. Everybody say check your heart. And I want to teach you some stuff because what tithers have that non-tithers don't is something called expectation. When you're a tither, you have an expectation from God. There's something natural about believing God for something because you've done some things that you know that you should do. That there's something about doing what's right and giving that releases your faith to believe God and to expect from him. Okay, it's like this. My kids, um, uh, Kennedy came home from school the other day, and she had this certificate. And it was like, she is a master such and such in math. She's like, Daddy, look. And she's so excited. And she says, Daddy, can I have some money now? I want Robux. The devil is a liar. That Robux didn't suck my wallet dry this year. So, Daddy, can I have $5 for Robux because of what I did in school? Because there's something about doing what's right that connects to your, your expectation. And the same thing when we're right with God when it comes to our giving and when it comes to our attitude and the way that we handle money, it causes you to expect some stuff from God that other people don't expect. See, when you don't give to God and you don't do what you're supposed to do when it comes to finances, can we just be honest? Many of us don't even ask for anything. We're just grateful for the little bit that he allows us to have. But then there's some of us that pray bold prayers in faith because we're doing everything that we know to do and we're believing that just as God is a good father that he's going to bless his children because they've obeyed. I, I want you to see the understand and, and understand the importance of expectation. Somebody shout expectation. expectation. 
And so that's what happened with Abraham last week. Abraham says to the servants, he says, listen, me and the boy are going to worship. We're going to sacrifice. We're going to give an offering, and then we'll be back. Notice this. He says it before he gets there. He says it before God reveals it. But there was something in his heart that had expectation that there was going to be a ram in the bush, even though he didn't see a ram in the bush. So when he got to the place of sacrifice, God provided because he had expectation. And do you understand? When you are right with God, there's things that you can expect that others can't expect. I know only seven people going to appreciate this, but I want you to see this. Tithing is a God thing. And I know we're in a world and we're in a society today that people are beating up tithes. See, careful little dollar talking about you can, you know, stop tithing. I was wrong. Well, ask them to give you your money back from all them videos. And then I'll be cool with you being wrong. But understand what I'm saying to you is this attitude and people are trying to redefine every single thing in life. And now you have people in church trying to redefine what God said belongs to him. He says, just bring it. Everybody say, bring it. Notice this. People will argue and say, oh, no way in the New Testament do we see tithing. Well, I think that's wrong. Watch what Jesus says in Luke 11:42. Jesus says, "What sorrow awaits you, Pharisee, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens. But you ignore justice in love of God. You should tithe. Yes. But do not neglect the more important things. Understand that tithing was not a heaven or hell issue." But it was showing the condition of your heart. And Jesus was saying, there are some bigger things we got to deal with. But don't forget that you should tithe. Yeah, because God blessed you in a way that you should give back to him. Now, I got to give you a couple things. I want to lay a foundation. And I promise this message will get good and I'll be out of here in the next 24 minutes. Watch this. He says in Numbers 18, 21. I'm going to hit this and run. Numbers 18, verse 21. Then we're going to go to 28 and 29. Watch what he says. As for the tribe of Levi... Your relatives, I will compensate them for their service in the tabernacle. Instead of the allotment of land, I will give the tithes from the entire land of Israel. You must present one-tenth of the tithe received from the Israelites as a sacred offering to the Lord. This is the Lord's sacred portion, and you must present it to Aaron the priest. Be sure to give the Lord your best portions of the gifts given to you. Let's go to Deuteronomy 14, 22, 23. I told you I'm running real quick. Watch what he says. He says, you must set aside a tithe of your crops, one-tenth of all your crops you harvest each year. Watch what he says in verse 23. Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship. The place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. And eat there in his presence. Then this applies to your tithe of grain, new wine, olive oil, and the firstborn males of your flocks and herds. Do this, doing this will teach you always to fear the Lord your God. Everybody say respect. What he's saying is when you bring it to God, you're showing respect for God. This is a covenant that you're making with God. When I give God my tenth, a tenth, when I'm giving that to him and I'm consistent and I'm faithful, it's a covenant and it's an agreement and it teaches me how to honor God and put him first. Somebody shout, put him first. Here's, a, here's another one I want to give you. This is really good. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 37 in the Message Bible. Nehemiah chapter 10, 37. I'm only saying it so you can write it down, but I'll read it. He says, we will bring the tithes from our fields to the Levites. Since the Levites are appointed to collect the tithes in the towns where we work, we'll see to it that a priest descended from Aaron will supervise the Levites as they collect the tithes and make sure that they take a tenth of the, tri- of the tithes to the treasury and the temple of our God. Watch this. He says, we will not neglect the temple of our God. Everybody say, my money matters. Here's what I want you to see. He's showing us principles and the place where tithe belongs. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Everybody say that. The tithe belongs to the Lord. The tithe belongs to Balenciaga. Nope. The tithe belongs to Nike. The tithe belongs to Coach. The tithe belongs to the Lord. He says, I want you, 
I want you to understand this. Now, there's three things I got to give you. I'm going to give you three things. I'm going to give you three things. Number one, principle. I'm going to give you purity. And I'm going to give you purpose. Everybody say principle, purity, and purpose. I got to give this to you. I got to give it to you. Here's the first thing I want you to see. Principle, principle, principle. Luke 27 and 30. Um, Leviticus 27 30 says, one-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain of the fields or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. And it must be set apart to him as holy. The tithe belongs to the Lord and it's holy. Set apart means holy. Holy means different. So it can't look like the rest. It has a different purpose. So the principle to tithing is understanding that tithing never goes out of style. And I would bet anybody, I'm willing to put a million dollars that I don't have on the line. Because I've learned something. That what God said is his and what God said is holy. We never see where he no longer says it's his or holy. I let that sink in. At no point God says, you know what? The tithe, it ain't holy no more. And the tithe, it's not mine anymore. He says, it's mine and it's holy. So what God is trying to produce, he's trying to produce in us consistency through this principle that's what, that what belongs to him is his but he's not going to take it from you it's your responsibility to give it to him so i don't pay tithe i return it i don't pay it i return it let me let me show you this lady gave this example i thought it was kind of cool you can find errors in it, but I think it works. And if you don't think it works, just act like it does. Um, she said she went to a restaurant. Uh, she had a great dinner. While she was going into the restaurant, she gave the valet her key. She goes into the restaurant, has a great dinner, dessert. She's hanging out with her friends. And then when it's over, they call the valet for her car. When the valet comes back with her car, she gives him a tip. She says, thank you. And she goes on her way. And she's in the car, and she starts saying, you know what I thought about? Imagine if the valet pulled up and said, aren't you excited? Aren't you happy? Aren't you glad you got your car back? Why would I be excited and glad that you returned what belonged to me? And a lot of us hold our tithing hostage as if it's ours. I can't afford to tithe right now because I got some bills. How can't you afford to give God? Okay, okay, y'all gonna like this. Um, what happens? Have you ever been out with somebody who owes you money? Look straight. Just look straight. Look at me. Look straight. Don't even turn. Don't, don't even do it. You've been out with somebody who owe you money, and they know you, they owe you money, and you know they owe you money, and y'all know they owe you money, and they have the nerve to spend money in front of you like they debt free? Kisa, I don't, I don't. Because, because, because how is it that you can budget? For something that's not a priority. But you haven't returned. I didn't ask you for more. I just said give me back what's mine. It's a principle that God says return what belongs to me. Somebody shout principle. Here's another thing we see. We see purity. Leviticus, same, same one. He says Leviticus 27, 30. He says one-tenth of the produce. produce of the land, whether grain or of the fields of the fruit of the fruit of the trees, belongs to the Lord. It must be separate. It must be set apart to him as holy. Here's what I want you to see. The first of the tenth.
blesses the rest. The rest follows the first. Okay, okay. Uh, my son Kyrie, great kid. I want to slap him sometimes, and I do. You can't mandate report this. He's old. He's grown now. But I'm one of those parents that if my little ones do something, everybody's in trouble. I know. I know. I'm old school. I'm old school. One of them act up, you all in trouble. Let me tell you why. Because most of the foolishness they're doing, they saw the older one do. See, I knew. I knew y'all was going to be quiet. So you're held accountable because how you act and what I do with you is an example for the rest. So if I get you in order, you help keep them in order. And spiritually, that's what tithe does. It blesses the rest and keeps it in order. That's why God says when you set it apart as holy, it guards the rest of it. But many of us, we don't give God what's holy. We don't give God what's his. We don't tithe and we don't give tenth. We give what we feel like when we feel like we can afford it. And then we're mad when we don't understand why blessings aren't coming our way. And we say immature things like if I could afford it, I would do it. But that's a lie because whatever's in your heart, you'll do with your hands. Oh, come on. Some of y'all looking at me crazy, but some of y'all got some weed addictions and you were broke and you didn't found a roach somehow. You didn't put five on. You were broke. You put five on it. Anybody know? A, you know, you find some people. Let's just put this together and get it back. I know what some of y'all be doing. I'm just saying, when you really want something, you will find a way. And this, this principle... It's about purifying the rest. It's about helping us. <laughs> what kind of church is this? It's, it's about helping us get some things in order. And do you understand when you don't give God what belongs to him, you forfeit your favor? Wow. See, tithing is not about money. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Tithe, the principle, tithing is less about money and it's more about faith. It's God, I trust you. And it's a matter, it's a matter of priority. The principle of priority prioritizes faith in God over other financial obligations. In other words, I've already set aside in my mind that when this check comes, what I owe God. What I'm giving him. And I, and I want you to see the power in this because it's not about your $2 and $7 and $7,000. It's about the act of obedience. It's about the fact that, God, I trust you, and I'm just giving you what belongs to you. Now, watch this. Everything God asked for, he never really asked for it for him to keep it. God only requests and requires things from us so he can take it back and multiply it. So, in other words, what we give God is really a seed. That's why faith is a seed. So even faith that we get, every man is given a measure of faith. We're given a seed of faith on the inside of us. But at the same time, how we act and how we treat our money is also a seed. When we give seed, we're saying, God, here is my faith. Now do something with it. And sometimes it's more money. Sometimes it's a new job. Sometimes it's raises and bonuses. But sometimes it's keeping cancer out your body. Sometimes it's keeping your marriage together. Sometimes it's keeping peace in your head and your home. Because the principle is not about money. It's about priority. It's about establishing something with God that, God, you come first. You come before everything else. And some of us will pay our cell phone bill before we pay <laughs> the other bills that we're supposed to have. And we prioritize things and we can tell what our priority is by our bank statements will you spend the most money I, I, i'll leave that alone for the next one because y'all i was about to get deep on y'all but y'all would have walked out let me give you the number three number three number three everybody say purpose okay you can walk out you can tell <laughs> what you worship by what you spend 
All right, I'll prove it. I went to the mall yesterday. I felt led to go to the mall. I only go to the mall when I'm led. And, uh, don't judge me. And I went to get my children some clothes. And I was like, shoot, Jordan needs some sneakers. And normally I got the hookup. I got the hookup. So I usually order them because I get a discount. But I didn't have time for the discount because she needed some sneakers. So I did what I don't normally do. I paid full price, Sean. I paid full price. <sighs> Jamari, I paid full price. It bothered me that I paid full price. That my nine-year-old daughter has a $95 pair of sneakers. But here's the thing. Here's what I thought about. Here's where it challenged me. I bought those sneakers without second guessing. I was like, ooh, those are fly. You got a five? Woo, give them to me. Bag them. Done. At the register. Waiting with my money before she even rang them up. But I was thinking about how many times we raise an offering. Who can give 50 and we praying about it? Lord, if you want me to give this, show me a sign. So Foot Locker gets the glory. God gets the leftovers. Everybody say priorities. I knew I was going to cut y'all. Y'all ain't come back. Y'all come back next week with some old beat up sneakers on. Like. <laughs> All right, let me hurry up. We got to go. It's lunchtime. Uh, number three, write this down. Purpose. 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 Right? We have principle, we have purity, but we have purpose. Malachi 3, famous tithing scripture. Malachi 3, 9 through 12 in the NLT says, You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's army. Watch what he says. If you do. Everybody say, if you do. This is what God says in response to trusting him. He says, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Watch this. He says, try it. Put me to the test. As a result of this, watch what happens. Your crops will be abundant. Why? For I will guard them from the insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's army. Watch what happens as a result of this. Then, everybody say then. Amen. All nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land with such delight, says the Lord of heaven's army. What God says is there would be a sufficiency in the house of God when we tithe. He says there's the principle, the purity, and the purpose is to make sure that ministry continues. We don't tithe because God needs our money. We tithe because God needs our faith. There's nothing God is going to do in your life outside of faith in him. So our tithing is connected to our faith. It's connecting to believe in God. And he says, when you do this, here's what I'm going to do in return. Here's how I'm going to bless you. In, in response to your faith, I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to bless you so big, you need another house. I'm going to bless you so big, you need to open up a new account. I'm going to bless you so big, you need another garage. I'm going to bless you so big, you got to choose another degree. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Tell me he wants to bless you big. Go ahead and tell somebody. You didn't tell the right person. Find somebody else and tell him. He wants to bless you big. See, the problem and one of the reasons we don't give is because we think we serve a small God. We think we serve a stingy God. But is there anybody that believes that God's about to bless you big as a result of your faith? You got a blessing that you're going to need some help. You're going to have to call U-Haul. You're going to have to call some friends. You're going to have to get a storage unit. God's getting ready to bless you big. Somebody shout big. big. 
He's about to do it, but watch this. Here's the key. People ask me this question all the time. Well, I want to tithe, but I tithe in different ways. I give time to help people in the community. I do this and I do that. That's not tithing. I don't care what anybody tells you. That's not tithing. That's generosity. Let me help you. Where should I tithe? I tithe where I'm fed. It's interesting. It's funny to me because there are people that will eat in one place and feed another. It's like, it's like my kids are getting older. Can I preach my pain? Three grown kids. They eat a lot. But you know what? I don't mind them eating. Here's why. Because they will buy groceries. <laughs> they buy groceries. I love it. Eat all you want. You know, go get some more. Because because they feed what feeds them. You have to feed where you're fed. You have to understand the importance of this. Jesus even curses the fig tree because the fig tree only received but didn't give. We'll prove it. Jesus goes to see the fig tree. He looks at it. He's like, yo, it's not producing any figs. He's like, that's not the purpose I created you for. He said, I created you in a way that whatever I do in you, you'll be able to produce and be a blessing to somebody else. Somebody else should be able to come and now get some figs off your tree because that's what you do. Fig trees produce figs. That's simple. That's fair. Give back what you've been given. But Jesus comes back and the fig tree stops. Produ- now, I don't know if it was because Jesus was hungry. I don't know if he was mad. It's like, you know what? I'm hungry. And you know, because you get an attitude when you're hungry. When you're hangry. <laughs> Jesus is hangry. And he, he curses the fig tree. Fig tree dies. Why? Because the fig tree produced enough or received enough to be alive. But it stopped giving back. And do you understand when you stop returning what you should return, God will cut off your source? Because you're no longer putting seed in the ground. So when I tithe, I'm putting seed in the ground and I'm feeding what's feeding me. It's a cycle. Everybody say a cycle. So when I, when I do this, I understand that I have to bless what blesses me. I have to pour into what pours into me. I have to help what helps me. Everybody say cycle. Okay, let, I, I promise you, try this. Put $1,000 in your bank account. And go spend $100 10 times. And then go back and try to spend $100 on the 11th time. (laughs) Promise you, you will be embarrassed in front of that store. Because at some point, you have to keep replenishing where you're receiving from. It's a simple principle that many of us miss. So we have, to see, we have to see this and understand that what God is trying to do, he's not trying to take something from you, but he's really trying to get something to you. So we have to feed what feeds us. Can I show you something before we go? It's going to get good. All right, Marquise, let me, let me have that. Let's, this is the good part. He's nervous about this part, but let me see. I want to show you something. All of it. Yeah, that's a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Where were you at last night? Was, oh, my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> they nervous. They nervous. Uh, oh, man. You, you, come here, man. Come here, come here. You sold me the sneakers. Yeah, what's your name again? Joe Varney. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's make some noise for him. Come on, come on. Don't be scared. You're famous today. Eh? Everybody say, feed what feeds you. All right, so God requires a tenth. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Okay. Eh. Let's see. Let's count this. Let's stuff together. All right, ready? You don't, you don't like money, huh? No, nah, I, I do. Okay, okay. Two hands, two hands. Two. All right, count. One, two.
20. That's twenty dollars. What's a tithe of twenty dollars? What's ten percent? Two. There you go. Put two dollars right there. You see that? That's two. What you got? Eighteen. Ninety percent. Ten percent. Can I show y'all something? Because I know some of y'all think y'all know where this is going. I need somebody else. Give me another teenager. Another teen. Come on. Come on. Oh, I need a teen. You're not a teen angel. Give me a teen. Come on. Come on. You got to run, though. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. Don't run too fast. It's slippery. You know, how to, you know how to walk, run? You ever cross the street and you want to look like you're running? You just move your arms fast. You be like. All right. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 8, 9, 30. All right. What's 10% of 30? $3. Okay. Now what you got left? 27, 90%. Okay. I need one more person. Uh, people, people waking up now. They waking up. Right, come on, he's ready. See that? He's ready for God to use him. Everybody say expectation. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. And because of expectation, I got to bless him. One. Wait, how much is that? I gave you 20. I gave you 30. That's 50. How much is that? How much is that? This is $100. I gave him 50. How much is this? 50. 50. Take that. Now, how much is a tithe? Tithe. Watch this. Now, how much you got left? How much you got left? How much you got left? You got 18? All right. 27. Okay, watch what happens, though. See, a lot of us are ready for me to focus on the fact that they got 90. They're ready to focus on the fact that they were blessed. But there's something that you miss. You miss what happened. Look what's here. <laughs> this goes in the house. Because now, when they sow, come here, Marquise. When they sow into the house, we take it, God blesses us, and then he gives me another stack. So it wasn't her $3 alone. It wasn't his $2 alone. It wasn't his $5 alone. But collectively, when you tithe, God blesses the work of your hand so you can produce more. And now that we produce more, we got more to give. Marquis like, are you sure? We got more. Anybody come to church with no gas in their car? Anybody? Who did? No gas? Come on. Come on. You're taking too long. Y'all playing. See, you don't want to be blessed. Come on. So now, one. Come on. Two. I don't know. Just take it off. All right. Let's call that, let's call that 20, 28. No, that's not good. Let's call it 30. $30. What's your tithe? Three. Go ahead. All right. Three. Okay. Okay. House takes that. Goes to the house. Y'all see what's happening in the house? Y'all see what's happening in the house? See, to you, your tithe doesn't seem like it's that much. What you're releasing doesn't seem like it's a lot. That's just my love. Church don't need my money. It's only $5, only three. But Marquise, look what's in his hand. It's, it's working for us. And what God is doing, he's multiplying our faith. Y'all go sit down. Go ahead, go sit down. Thank you, go sit down. Stay right here. Come stand with me. Go ahead, y'all good. Uh, we're going to find some. No, keep that. Y'all work for that. Oh, look at that. Oh. All 
I like it. Somebody's like, I want to be used by God. <laughs> I want to be used. Use me, Lord. <laughs> Sean, play some use me music. Um, no, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. <laughs> Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and it may. my story. I can find the note. And I am available to you. Okay. So, so, so. Don't let money be something, keep playing though, it sounded good, that blocks your blessing. Like, think about this. This is dollars. Paper. It's powerful. It's a tool. But learn how to use it. Learn how to trust God with this. Do you understand, like, this little bit of something blocks so many of our hearts. Jesus says where your treasure is, where this is, your heart is. And so many of us have allowed this. Look, look at this. This is nothing. I know because you see ones. But even if it was been in them, it's nothing. It comes and it goes. Think about how much money you wasted on stupid stuff. You got that money back. How many? How much money you wasted last Valentine's Day on stupid people you ain't even with no more? Some of y'all get it, but I kept the ring. Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Y'all just pawn shop ministry. <laughs> Shouldn't have left. <laughs> what kind of church? am I a part of um all I'm saying is all I'm saying is this is nothing but it could be a tool that opens a door for you this could literally be a tool that changes your life but learn how to use it don't let it use you and money is playing so many people the Bible says it's the love of money. Not money, but the love of it. That's the root of all evil. It does something in your heart. And I want to break that off of you. That this is nothing. This is small in comparison to what God wants to do in your life. And I'm challenging you. Can I tell you this prophetically? I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know what. But I believe in the next three months we're moving out of this building. Before you clap, wait, 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 before you clap, before you clap, before you clap, before you clap, before you clap. I am a hopeful person and I am a positive person and I am half full, more than half empty person. I am prophetic as a person, but I really honestly, sincerely believe like I can't sleep right now because I see us leaving in three months. I don't know how, I don't know what building, but I'm believing it. But here's why, I'm, here's why I'm saying this to you. Here's why I'm saying this to you. Because it takes favor, faith, and finances. We need all three. I don't want finances in faith without favor. Because favor goes beyond finances. Favor will go beyond your credit report. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You driving some stuff better than your credit says. So hear what I'm saying. We got to go. I believe it's happening. But here's what I want. I don't want you to give out of this need like, oh, the church needs it. We need it. But it has to be bigger than that. It has to be your heart saying, God, you deserve it. 
and motivation feeds me. Does it, does it feed? Just lift your hand. If it feeds you, let me see. Let me see. I just want to look. I need inventory. I need to see if it feeds you. If it feeds you. If it blesses your life. Feed. You can put your hands down. Feed. What feeds you? Tithe and be generous where you're fed. Today, I want to invite you into an opportunity for growth and for maturity. There's many of you who have been tithing. Thank you for your faithfulness. There's some of you that tithe every now and then when you think you can afford it. Thank you for trying. And I believe that God's getting ready to shift you and move you into a place of maturity and consistency. And there's some of you that haven't been doing it at all. But watch this. I'm not speaking a curse over your life. I want to speak a blessing over your life. That God's getting ready to turn your thinking and understanding around to the point where you're going to be the biggest giver and the first giver and a faithful giver. Somebody say, he's preaching to me. Go ahead. If, I'm, if that's you. But we got to make sure that we don't allow this to block this. A little stack of some dollars. It's blocking our blessing. It's blocking our future. It's getting in the way of our destiny. But I believe by faith and everything's getting ready to turn around. Do you believe that? I believe God is raising up some thousandaires, some millionaires, some successful entrepreneurs. I know it's only for eight of y'all. It's cool. It's only for eight of you. Some of y'all going to be very good with money. Healthy relationship with money. Where we gonna, you're going to be arguing over dinner. No, I'm paying for it. No, I'm paying for it. No, I'm paying for it. Some of y'all's prayers are getting ready to change. Can I be honest? Some of y'all are going to go from praying and believing God for a car. And you're going to be praying, God, which car should I give away? Who am I talking to and who am I, who am I talking about? That some of y'all going to be praying not about what, what state, what country you should buy another house in. You're going to be praying about who can I move into this house debt free? God is going to finance your faith for the future. And it's time for us to grow as we give. Come on, let's stand all over the room. Hey, thank you for joining us today and tuning into this message. We hope that this inspired you and encouraged you and most importantly, motivated you to be the person that God called you to be. So look, before we go, we want to do a few things. If you want to support this ministry, the giving options are down below. We're doing so many great things in God's kingdom here. And with your help, we can accomplish so much more. So look, we hope that's again, that this message encouraged you and inspired you. And we can't wait to see you. Make sure you join us. Um, at 1130 a.m. on Sundays. We want to see you guys there and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.